Hi there, Mariam. My name is Ellen, and I'll be correcting these essays for you. Uh, great work getting enrolled in the course and beginning your essays. Wonderful. Let's take a look at what you did in this uh, first one about schools and whether they should be more entertaining or merely um, educational. Let's see what you wrote. Education's sole aim is to impart useful knowledge and information to students in various fields, thereby preparing them for future. I believe that while attaining this fundamental aim to educate children, educational institutes should be more fun as well. This essay intends to look at, into the reasons of my argument using examples from Harvard University and Cambridge University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. Okay, so um, pretty good. Pretty good, nice first paragraph. Let's clean up some of the grammar though, okay? Because there were some grammatical errors um, regarding articles primarily. So let's look at that. Um, here you could have said educations with an apostrophe S, but um, there are a lot of um, kind of grammar experts out there who don't like seeing an apostrophe S after um, something that's not, you know, a living thing. Since education is an abstract noun and it's not a living thing, what you're really supposed to do here is to, is to use of. So it should be the sole aim of education. Okay. Um, and so for the purposes of IELTS, it's best to do it like this. So the sole aim of education is to impart useful knowledge and information to students in various fields, comma, thereby preparing them for the future. I believe that while attaining this fundamental aim, you didn't need to say to educate children because you already said what the fundamental aim is, all right? Uh, educational institutes, and then also it's good because then you don't have educate and educational in the same sentence. It's just very close to each other. It's a cleaner way of writing it. So I believe that while attaining this fundamental aim, educational institutes should be more fun as well. This essay intends to look into the reasons uh, maybe for my argument using examples from Harvard University, etc. Okay, and then the rest of it is fine. Okay, so uh, now I'm super happy that you are trying to use a nice clear topic sentence and that's really important um, for your coherence and cohesion score. But this is a little awkward. My first argument is that. Um, it feels very conversational and it doesn't feel um, like a semi-academic style essay, okay? So let's see what you actually said here. Um, I th all right, I think I've got it. What you could have said is that according to many psychologists, a typical student's attention span is between 10 to 15 minutes, hence two rigid learning may dry them out and make them uninterested in the process. Okay, because you've got of learning, in learning, it's too much. It, you're missing a wonderful opportunity to have some cohesion here, okay? So it should have just been in this process. In other words, in the process of learning. And then it's clear and it's cohesive and it's really much better. Um, so what you have to be careful about here is that um, you've gone straight into your main idea, whereas what you really needed was a topic sentence that more or less introduces the main idea, okay? And that's a really important element in your, um, in your paragraphs. It's important to give your examiner or your reader a sentence that introduces what it is you're going to talk about in the essay. All right, but let's go on uh, with the essay and um, see what maybe other changes we can make. So my first argument is that most psychologists claim a typical student's attention span is between 10 to 15 minutes, hence too rigid form of learning may dry them out and make them uninterested in learning. This is because studying in a boring way causes students to lose interest quickly and thus will have more difficulty in grasping the concept. Uh, mm. And as a result, teachers will have uh, a harder and 
prolonged ED time teaching a course. Okay, so as you can see, I kind of struggled with some of the grammar in this sentence. I don't want to fix it just yet. Let's keep going and then we'll talk about it. A research article by Harvard University suggests that, no comma, in order for students to absorb knowledge rigorously, it is uh, absolutely necessary to make the classroom setting more fun and interactive. Full stop. A service of 56 schools in the United States with a T showed that academic courses integrating some kind of interactive activities to impart information had a success rate of 92% in achieving A grades of students in comparison with uh, 48 other schools having only 52% using some kind of conventional methods of teaching. Therefore, to develop expected learning of concentration, I don't understand that. What does that mean, expected learning of concentration? Schools must not instigate, that's the wrong word, uh, must uh, uh, apply teaching methods that are more effective and interesting for acquiring knowledge. Okay. Um, so, there's a lot of information here. I think you could have condensed some of this. I th so I think that maybe um, you had a couple of uh, pieces of information or maybe um, some language that you could have gotten rid of uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a fairly long paragraph. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to go back to this section of the paragraph and see what kind of changes we can make so that you have a sentence that's a clear introduction to your paragraph and then a sentence that's uh, a clear idea of what it is you're trying to um, actually um, argue. Try this. It is widely known that uh, education that is too rigid may make students uninterested in learning. This is because studying in, in, in a boring way causes students to learn in, uh, lose interest quickly and thus have more difficulty in grasping the topic uh, concept. Full stop. As a result, teachers will uh, have a harder time uh, and require more effort to teach a course. Okay, something like that. And then I think you were fine. So it's a little shorter, I think. I think it's a little shorter, but it's certainly more clear. Okay, so then uh, this whole thing here was nice. Um, of course, you needed a full stop here. And then the rest of this was good. I, it was fine. It was absolutely fine. So let's, let's move on to your next paragraph. Now, look what you did here. You've got the word secondly here, which is, you know, it's okay. But in order to use secondly, you needed to have a firstly. So these are um, linkers that they kind of go together. If you have a firstly, you need a secondly. And if you have a secondly, you needed to have a firstly. And the same thing is, um, the same thing applies with, uh, like on the one hand and on the other hand, you can use them, but you need to use both of them. Otherwise you shouldn't use either. Okay. And it's the same with firstly and secondly. So secondly, according to scientific research without the A, students are more likely to learn a subject quickly and retain information for a longer period. If a combination of all different senses, that is sight, touch, hearing, and smell is made, a is made use of during the learning process since no comma since a brain functions more effectively in collecting interpreting and retaining the information that way a study conducted in the cambridge university in cambridge university without the, the suggested that when students of a botany class were taken to botanical gardens for practical demonstration it was followed by a greater capability in performance hence use of combination of different senses has shown substantial effect in students' results, uh, a substantial effect. Okay, um, that's a nice paragraph. I like it. It's it's brief. All right, definitely briefer than your other paragraph, but it's nice. Okay, what happened here? You've got a third body paragraph. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute.
Um, so I like this paragraph. However, I want to remind you of what the topic is asking you for. The topic is talking about entertainment, okay, uh, versus, you know, schools that just educate. So what does entertainment mean? This is a really kind of interesting, indirect way IELTS has to kind of check your vocabulary. What does the word entertaining, entertainment, what does it mean? Okay, it means things that amuse us, things that are funny, things that are lighthearted and, and yes, capture our attention, but in a light kind of funny um, way that kind of whisks us away into this like happy kind of uh, feeling. So that's what we mean by entertainment, okay? Um, I really liked your paragraph and the example about botany, but I have to ask you if this example is actually talking about entertainment. You see, there is another word for this and it's um, experiential. So experiential is meaning that you gain the knowledge through experience. So it's hard to really say that this is entertaining. Um, so why am I telling you this? Because it's understanding these nuances and understanding this kind of vocabulary and being able to use it that separates a good IELTS essay from a really good IELTS essay. Okay, so it's important to understand what is meant by entertainment and um, structuring your, par your paragraphs in such a way that you're talking about things that are entertaining and not perhaps experiential or learning by doing that kind of thing. Okay, so um, other than that though, I liked it very much. It was well done. Now let's take a look at this. You've probably understood by now that uh, we recommend a four paragraph structure. So two body paragraphs, an introduction and a conclusion. So you decided to write here a third body paragraph. So I'm really interested to see why. Let's see what you wrote. On the contrary, proponents of the latter believe that school's basic motive is education and that parents send their children for learning purpose. Hence, the strictness is necessary to tame them. All right, so here there are a handful of things that I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about the expression on the contrary. On the contrary is something that a lot of IELTS students like to use, but a lot of times I'm finding that they use it incorrectly. Um, here what you really meant to use was in contrast or however or that being said or despite what has been said. So one of those expressions that shows kind of like shifting gears and switching sides, that would have been more appropriate. On the contrary, is used in a very different sense, so it's not the best thing here. Um, you had a couple of other issues. Let's look at that. Proponents of the latter. The latter what? Um, it, it's kind of tricky if you're using the latter to refer to a previous paragraph. Um, so what I want to suggest here is maybe proponents of the above, or maybe that's not what you mean. I, actually, I don't think that's what you mean at all. I'm not really sure. But let's, let's see. Uh, so in contrast, proponents of something that we'll figure out believe that school's basic role is education and that parents send their children uh, for learning purposes. Hence, strictness is necessary to tame them. I'm not a huge fan of the word tame them. Um, basically, we use the word tame maybe to talk about like, you know, animals like horses or, or some other animal that is wild and needs to be tamed. Um, it's not often that we use it uh, to talk about children and definitely not in, in an essay like this. So it's probably not the best word to use. Um, let's see, I'm still trying to figure out what you meant here with the latter. I want to say that you were referring to this, but the latter is definitely not the, the way you want to express this. So uh, proponents of uh, school as education, believe that this is the school's main role and that parents send their children to learn. Hence, strictness is necessary to 
teach them to obey. Maybe you could have made changes like that, okay? But yeah, the ladder can't be used like this. It has also some very specific rules. So firstly, most parents do not have as, as such strict attitudes towards their brood. So children do not take them seriously. And hence, home is not an ideal place for learning while the school environment forces them to study. Now, what you need to be careful about here is that you're not going off topic because now I see that you're talking quite a bit about strictness, okay, and discipline, but that's not entirely what the essay has asked you to talk about. They've asked you to talk about entertaining schools that are filled with, you know, laughter and joy and amusement um, versus schools that are just education, education, okay? So, um, you need to be careful that you don't go off topic. Let's see what you did after this. Secondly, here you don't mean disciple, you mean discipline. Discipline is essential as without it, students cannot be well educated. Teachers following a strict, teachers following a strict regime without the comma here, compel students to follow the school's protocol, thereby enabling them to study effic efficiently. A study by the French government on schools showed that when teachers followed strict control on students of grade six, despite overall increased discipline, it led to 82% mm, and 82% fall in grades. This clearly shows that students are more likely to show an aptitude for learning when classes are more fun and engaging. Okay, now this is really interesting because this whole time I thought that this paragraph was about why you think this um, idea of, of uh, schools as educational institutes only is a good idea. But now at the very end of the paragraph, it shows us that you're showing us why this is in fact a failure. So this was, we had no way of knowing this was going to happen. And that's again, why a clear topic sentence that shows your main idea, that's why it's so important. But I want to take a look at this again. The question asks you here, which do you agree with? So you didn't need to talk about why this education only philosophy is a failure. You could, but you didn't need to. If you're going to do that, then you need to make it clear to us, um, even in your introduction, if you can. So this essay intends to look into the reasons for my argument and why education only schools uh, lead to failure, okay? So you could have added that because that's essentially what you were talking about in this paragraph. So then again, looking at this first sentence, which we talked about earlier, you need to change this to show that you're not actually in favor of this, but you're showing why it is a bad idea. Okay. So, um, in contrast, schools that focus on education only have been shown to not effectively prepare students for the future. All right. And then, you know, you can go on into that, but this actually was um when i when i read this the first time through i didn't understand the direction you were going in and so this is a problem with progression and ideas and with cohesion okay and coherence so it needs to be to be fixed in fact i would have probably suggested not to include it at all because as i told you we typically recommend a a four paragraph structure and not five let's go on to your conclusion to conclude from the arguments and examples given above, I firmly believe for students to develop an interest in learning, educational institutes should be more entertaining by incorporating engaging and fun activities in the subjects. This way, the concepts will be more clear and it will facilitate long-term memory retention. All right, that's perfect, perfect. So it's really just your body paragraphs that need some work. Um, you know, you, you should have, because uh, it's a really long uh, correction, you should have a lot of information on how to do that. I want to go on to your next essay about the enjoyable activity of the child. Recent studies show that a child's creative abilities and natural talents are enhanced through engaging them in enjoyable physical activities. Okay. Uh, more than reading. Okay. Or how about this? creative and natural talents are uh, more enhanced uh, than by reading. I think that would have been better. I completely agree with this notion. will support my view using research studies. Perfect. 
Firstly, a child's inquisitive nature, especially in their comma here, especially in their formative years, comma, does not allow them to sit diligently. In fact, they are continuously exploring new objects from their environment and performing random activities. Ideally, engaging adolescents in fun activities not only improves with an S their motor skills, but also without the two also develops lifelong interest in learning by making the experience enjoyable. The French government recently conducted a survey in which children aged four to five years were shown interesting images and were asked to describe the pictures, making up their own story. Full stop. This activity has resulted in a breakthrough in children's creativity in outstanding ways. Full stop. The children have demonstrated remarkable improvement in drawing, problem solving, as well as communication skills. Thus, it is evident that engaging children in fun games inspires creativity in them. Okay, so I like this paragraph in many ways, but still it needs to be a little more tightly organized. So um, this essay is asking, did you include the prompt? Good. Okay. So, enjoying an enjoyable, uh, doing an enjoyable activity, skills, better skills, and creativity. So, what you really want to do is make sure that you have one central idea in each paragraph. What you could have done is you could have talked about activities that develop better skills, okay, than reading can, and talked about that in one paragraph. And then here, you could have talked about um, an activity that helps develop creativity better than reading can. Okay, so always kind of carrying this idea of reading. Now, I see again that you've written a third body paragraph, but I really want you to avoid doing this, okay? So, let's continue. Secondly, incorporating, no capital here, Physical activities in a child's daily routine is vital for their development since engaging them in games improves their fine motor skills. Innumerable schools incorporate various hands-on hands, hands -on exercises in a classroom setting such as Play-Doh, drawing, scissor cutting, picking up objects, and picking up objects to enhance a child's fine motor skills. Research without the A by uh, National Research Institute for Child Health and Development has stated that, without the comma, improving a child's ability in fine motor skills also helps them to complete age-appropriate self-care tasks that are required for everyday life activities, such as doing uh, buttons and zips. Good. I like this. This is very nice. Um, the only thing I would have uh, suggested here is just mentioning that these are skills that cannot be gained by reading alone. All right? That's the only thing missing. Other than that, it's good. Uh, let's see. On the other hand, reading is a good educational tool, but pref preferably for children aged eight and up, uh, age and above, uh, I can't read, <laughs> aged eight and above, uh, full stop. This is because books could be a little boring and dull for younger children since they are in their exploration age where they are interested in their surroundings. Learning through physical objects and games adds fu a fun element to their education, thereby resulting in long-term memory retention. A research study by the Center for International Child Health suggests with an S that a younger child who is more exposed to fun engaging activities shows greater aptitude for creativity when they grow up in comparison to those adolescents s who spend more time reading books okay so yes include reading i think it's a great idea to talk about the skills that reading can uh can develop okay but then you didn't need two extra paragraphs you only needed one okay and a good rule of thumb is to talk about the side that you don't support as much talk about that first and then leave your stronger paragraph, the one that you actually do support, leave that for closer to your conclusion. It's a better, stronger way of organizing your ideas. Um, so what you need to do is you need to just decide, if you want to talk about reading, you need to decide which one of these two paragraphs you want to get rid of. And then you need to talk about both skills and creativity in one paragraph that talks about the fun activities. And then you need to talk about uh, reading fun activities and, I'm sorry, reading, 
creativity and better skills in another paragraph. So it's quite a bit to organize, but it can be done. It can be done well. But again, I would put the reading paragraph first and then the fun activities paragraph. To conclude from the arguments and examples given above, I firmly believe that every child's artistry can be enhanced through physical activities that are both an enjoyable and oh, that are both enjoyable and ease learning. Wait a minute. That are both enjoyable and ease learning in children. There we go. Okay. So Miriam, I see a lot of great things in your writing. You've got some really lovely grammar, some good vocabulary. We need to just kind of pull things together. I want you to use the template a little more closely. It's really going to help you organize your ideas, get them cohesive, get them very coherent and put them in a structure that will help you um, be more efficient in your writing and definitely staying on topic. Okay. Go ahead, correct these essays, send them back to us corrected. Uh, don't forget an error correction list mistakes and the next mistakes, uh, what the correct version is. And of course, send us another set of essays, um, as soon as you can. So you can really just keep up your progress. Okay. I'll be waiting for them. So good luck to you.